Bigfoot, Bigfoot, roaming through the land. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, a hairy a black man. Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Bigfoot Today, the show that's all about Bigfoot. I'm your host, Stephen Major, and with me is my co-host, Mitch the Man Johnson. How you doing, Mitch? Very well, Mr. Major. Wonderful. Wonderful to have you here. And i got to tell you what, we've got one heck of an exciting show for you today. Well, I'd like to say that we have, as our special guest, Russell Accord, a starring cast member in Expedition Bigfoot, that hit TV series on the Travel Channel. We're very excited to have him. We're going to be talking about that, a little bit about his life, and some of the other things that he has going on. So we're excited about that. We'll take a break here, and we'll be right back. This show is sponsored by Extreme Expeditions Northwest LLC, your gateway to adventure, specializing in guided Bigfoot expeditions to Alaska and throughout the Pacific Northwest and Canada. Well, welcome back, my friends. And now it's time to talk about what's new in Bigfoot today. Mitch, what's new? What's new? A lot. But we're going to focus in on two things. Um, The first thing, um, well, actually starts with a question. Um, Have you ever been, have you personally ever been to Oklahoma? Well, wait, the state, not the play, not the Broadway uh, play. You know, I can honestly tell you, no. In fact, Oklahoma is not a place that I've really thought about going to. Can nope. say I never have. Nope, and that's right. And I've not, neither one, neither the play nor the state have I been to. Um, and it's just not really on my top ten, but now it is. And why is that, Mitch? Because I wish I had some visuals, but in October, I believe, but y'all can look it up online, they have a Sasquatch um, festival you know, of their own there. Um, Now you might ask, so how did you know of that? They have now started a Bigfoot hunting license in Oklahoma. And Bigfoot hunting license. Yes, Bigfoot hunting. And before you get nervous, because neither one of us agree of going out and shooting Bigfoot, um, and it is against the law in a number of places in the Northwest, I haven't talked to the man. I was, I, I haven't been able to get a hold of him, but I'm almost certain looking at his interviews, it's a promotional thing. How, why else would you even think about Oklahoma, let alone the Oklahoma Sasquatch Festival? Now, who is the guy that instigated this? Well, the guy that runs the, the festival. The, I'm not using the right term, but the Oklahoma Festival. So he's gotten together with the state of Oklahoma, and uh, a local um, legislator um, is actually introducing the bill um, in the state to actually issue Bigfoot hunting <laughs> oh, licenses. <laughs> and I want one just for the novelty well, of it. Now, on the interview I saw of him— there was something I don't I don't haven't read the bill yet or anything. It's not to go shoot one, but you know who knows. But um, but then again, if you're a um, if you're a hoaxer, now at least you'll have a well, definitive season that you better stay home because there's guys locked and loaded to, to blow your brains away. Well, I can I can I can see where a few people's heads would have exploded with an announcement like that. that yes, and that. and so the details are there, but as a promotional item. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. How do you get noticed in this cluttered world? So then I got to thinking, and it's not for this Medellin Falls, but we've talked a little bit about it, is getting a hold of, I believe it's Lloyd's of London, getting a $10 million insurance policy for anyone um, here at Medellin Falls during that month that can capture a a Sasquatch Bigfoot alive and well, has to be healthy. Um, Will it happen? Probably not. Hasn't happened yet. But will you get attention nationwide? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, I can just hear oh, yeah. all across the country, all the major networks are going to cover it. And isn't that really the purpose of it? Well, you know, that wasn't there uh, like some Bigfoot bounty thing? Yeah. It was a show or you something You talked like to that? me about that at one time, too. That oh, was that was um, guy that sounds like a, a cracker, um, Biscotti or something like that. What's or, his name? What, I, it was a long time ago. It was, it like was a, a long time $10 ago. $10 million Bigfoot bounty or something, and evidently they didn't find him, so nobody got the bounty. Not that I heard of. Yeah, we haven't heard that. Okay, the well, other thing that's new, and actually if you want to go ahead and pull it up here, sure. you have it right here. Um, I saw this recently, and I think it was, let's see, the date of this is it's pretty new. It's, here's January 20, 28th, if you just pull it down just a little bit. Um, the, this... Dai Tal, I, I cannot pronounce, I'm not Russian, so I can't pronounce that. But um, here it is yet again um, in, the, um, in the news. And they're using all this research. And I am well, going to go when I have a second and read this. Could you explain to the folks what this is all about? Okay. They, what's the story behind it? The story about, quickly, the Reader's Digest version is 
back um, 60 years ago. So what would that have been, the 40s, 50s? I think it was the 50s. 50s. In, in the 50s, um, in Russia, um, there were a group of hikers. And these aren't just a bunch of guys sitting around. They put on their hiking boots. I mean, you actually get certified in t- certain type of hiking techniques and all that. It was it, the very... They're very, very good hikers. They know what the heck they're doing. And they decided to go on this hike. And when you're in Soviet Russia, that's what you do for entertainment. <laughs> not a place I want to go for a hike. No, no, not, not, Especially devil, back, not, not in back the 50s. Especially back in the 50s, no. And there was a book written. There's been a number of books. One book I read, uh, a gentleman went, and he was tracing their steps, talking to as many. Now, now what happened to these? Oh, books? I'm sorry. I'm jumping around. Yes. So anyway, they're, they're hiking. And and. Okay, that's cool. And it's winter time and all this. And then they just don't return as planned. I mean, this is a pretty remote area. So, and we didn't have cell phones. And they didn't return, didn't return. Um, family or whoever were getting nervous. So they sent out uh, a group. Because, again, if you're a serious hiker, you yeah. do let people know what your plans are. And then when they got there, they were like, where are they? Where are they? I mean, and there's a very, if, if you saw the picture, but it's an it's a, it's a actual picture of this tent, and it's collapsed, you know, the snow is kind of yeah. bent it down and all this, but, no, but nobody's around. There's no bodies. There's no nothing. And so then they start to go further and further and further out, and then they start finding bodies every so often. And it's very strange. Some of them have stripped off their clothes and they're just there. Um, others are barefoot, and they're, oh gosh, a quarter mile away. Why would you take your shoes off? Oh, and then another part, in the tent, it was actually like someone taking a knife. Instead of going through the regular part, they'd taken a knife and ripped part of the sure. tent and gone out the, um, the, the cut. And so it's just like very strange. Um, they, they're like, again, You'd have to really follow the background of these, these well, I say kids. They so were like, how is this related to Bigfoot? What's Well, because then people are like, what happened? Okay, how do you explain this? You yeah. know, and pretty much for, well, I don't know, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, it's been explained by being Yeti. Oh, okay, okay. I, that was the only so, other thing. So they, the Yeti came in there and chased them out of their tent, and when they were running from Yeti, they were screaming and yep. yelling and taking their clothes off and everything. Yep. And, and yeah. there were some other theories about there was maybe something in the Soviet Union, Russia, um, that they had actually seen something, and then they were killed by okay. the Russian government. There was that theory, yeah. too. Um, but actually, the most plausible explanation at the time was it was Yeti. And there's been other things and other explanations. And, um, and then, like I said, here's an article um, hmm. that, again, talks about what happens. What I read in this book made perfect sense to me. And it, um, I'm, not a, I'm not a physicist. Actually, physics is why I became a CPA. Um, college <laughs> physics kicked my ass, and I decided to go into accounting. But... Um, I don't know. Like the only thing I can equate it to is sometimes in my car, the back window, maybe the back two back windows are rolled down, and there's kind of this want 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 sound of the air, you know, um, and it's just the air pressure. And so I roll the windows up. Well, it's kind of like that. There's at the right velocity of air, given where it's out at on this. Well, I say mountain loosely yeah. because well, we, we grew up in the Pacific Northwest. Mountains. We actually have mountains. Looks a little more like a hill, but it's all the right. And this, the book I read, it talking to physicists and stuff, it's the perfect scenario at the right air velocity for this air pressure. Just seriously drove them nuts. I mean, made them insane uh, because it's well, one thing to have a car window, but when you have that whole wow, scheme. well, that's something. And we're so, gonna... so that was very interesting. But the point being is, here it is, still in the news. Um, they're talking about. Um, well, yeah, just what happened to them? Because it's it's one of those things that hasn't really yeah. defi- there's been theories, okay. and I guess there always will be because there there weren't cameras or anything. But um, but it's an it's a very interesting story. If you're not familiar with it, um, just Google it here. Um, you can say see that yeah, website physics.org um, at the top. 
and um but and you can all see the yeah. the name it's 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 really an interesting story um from that point of view well it says here the incident as it came to be called yeah. the tragic dilatov pass incident has spawned a number of theories from murderous Yeti to secret yep. military experiments. There you are. Yeah. Well, dude, that sounds like something to check out, man. It is. It is really an interesting story, a good read. Um, and, you know, the, the inter- ironic part here is, is after you read all this, we still won't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, definitively. Yeah. But these are just these are theories um, with more science, just like— I was thinking the only thing I could equate to it in my experience was the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Any high schooler that sat in, in school, you saw the bridge, you know, galloping yeah. Gertie, you know, and here's the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, and it's going like this and this and this. But because of just the right frequency of air velocity, it um, it it just kept going, and then the whole bridge collapsed. Well, the the people building the bridge were the smartest of the time, so it's not like you know, just yeah. Fred and Bob decided to build a bridge. I mean, you know, th- <laughs> these are very learned people, and yet this this fact of nature caused it. So um, that's why we keep hearing about it is because we learn more and more and more about our environment and our physics. So, but anyway, it's it's really interesting. So I think it's a, um, anyone interested in Sasquatch and Yeti should yeah. should check up on the latest. Okay. Well, listen, it's almost time for us to bring up our guest. But before we do, I want to play. The uh, for I want to play the uh, the trailer to Expedition Bigfoot. Cool. Um, since we're not doing a movie, you all want to get this trailer in here before we bring sure. bring Russ up here. Man, awesome, awesome. awesome. Well, great. Well, and what's inter- what's interesting to me is everyone picks up on certain things, and the one yeah. thing that stood out there that maybe yeah. most people didn't pick up, but I just personally me is th- that um, the guy's reaction when he was reliving the, the, his the experience. That they were interviewing. Right. Now, yeah. if you just saw that in and of itself, I know myself, I go, yeah, whatever. But the fact is, is that's a common theme throughout all of this. That book, remember the couple of episodes ago, um, I can't think of his name, but um, his YouTube channel is How to Hunt. And yeah, it's, it's a collection of, right. of stories yeah. and stuff. But there's a common theme about how it happens. And after that episode, um, I had an a, a online conversation with somebody who said he, that got the author, yeah. uh, I wish I could remember his name, but anyway, was very instrumental in helping the person I was talking to go back into the woods. Because because of his experience, he was afraid. Well, he, I mean, seriously, years later, he still would not go out in the woods. And, yeah. that, and that guy um, helped him through that process. Well, for a lot of people, it's very traumatic. Yes. So, anyways. Yeah, no, it's just very interesting. That's all. Well, great. Well, you know what? It's time for us to uh, take a uh, quick commercial break here, and then we're going to bring in our guest, Mr. Russell Accord. This show is sponsored by the Private Money Store Incorporated. They specialize in private real estate lending for commercial or business purposes in Washington State. Well, welcome back, my friends. And it's time in that show where we bring out the guest, the man you've been waiting for, Help me welcome Mr. Russell Accord to the show. Awesome. You too, brother. Thanks for coming, man. Oh, look at this. We really appreciate it. It's an honor to have you on the show, my friend. Great to be here. Thank you. Well, Russ, you know, I always like to start out with a guest with with a couple of questions. Um, And the first one and most important one is, how did you get into Bigfoot? Oh, well... I, I get that question a lot, um, and I would say the same way about 95% of everybody got into Bigfooting is uh, the patterson Gimlin film from 1967. I remember going into a theater with my parents. I was just a kid. We went and watched this thing in a theater, and I left that theater knowing that there's something out in those woods yeah. a, as a <laughs> child, and the hunt was on. I mean, from really? that from moment. Really? From that day one? Oh, it was, it was really ridiculous. I, You know how... Um, you know, like gold mining, you get that gold fever, that bug. Yeah. I got Bigfoot, you know, I, I needed to find it. And I and the search was on from that moment forward. I We lived in West Virginia at the time. West Virginia, okay. Lived way out in the in the mountains, in the woods. Dad always believed in living off the grid. So we were always in the woods. And that was the perfect playground for me. And the search began in West immediately. Yeah. And, and how old were you? 
Oh, shoot. I think I was, oh, let's see, White Horse Mountain. That would have been six or seven years old. No kidding. Yeah. You know, when I, the first time I saw that movie, I was totally intrigued by it. Yep. But it also scared the living hell out of me, and I wasn't about to go right on the woods looking for me. Yeah, it's, it's daunting to know that there's something of that yeah. size out there that if it approaches you, what are you going to do? I mean, you're just, you, you think, well, I, I, I'm prepared in the woods. I can do just about anything. But if you think of something of that mass uh, from what we hear, testimonies, this thing is significant in size. Yeah. I mean, what, how can we, uh, how do you what, deal with that? <laughs> yeah, well, right. I mean, you know, because like I grew up in, a, you know, out, out in the, you know, out in the bush and for a big portion of my life, you know, and grew up in Kellogg too in my younger, and we were always out in the woods. We were hunting and doing all those kind of things. But after that film, it changed the perspective of what it was of being in the woods. I was never that comfortable with it again. I mean, bears and things like that. Right. But to imagine that there's something of that size and and uh, you know, human characteristics that go along with it and the, all of those things, it was quite frightening. But yeah, if it's, it's as smart as they they say it is, that's even worse. Yeah. You know the um, we always think we're the top of the food chain, and I think that switched it up for a lot of us. <laughs> Man, it does. Yeah. It does. Um, and uh, you mentioned Bob Gimlin there. And uh, if some people, are, they wanted me to ask you a, a question because sure. um, you're very active with Bob and, and all that. And they were, how did you and Bob get, get together first? Uh, first off through research um, and then meeting up with him uh, for coffee and then yeah. seeing him at the conferences. Uh, always had a lot of respect for somebody who just, steps up and says, you know, against all the odds, I'm going to tell you, this is what I saw. And he's been the face behind it for so many years. Yeah, he has. And so, um, and having met him, you can't meet the guy and not just <laughs> love him because he's just, I've never heard him say, um, he, he's really never unkind to anyone. Yeah. I mean, and he's, he's what you say, uh, there's a Hollywood saying that say, when you're on, which means when you're around people, you're always smiling and you're on. You, you've given them the best that you have. Bob is never not on. I mean, whether he's yeah. meeting people, whether you're stopping by his house, he's always on. And you learn that he has a kind word for everyone. He loves everyone. And he always he's willing to give advice and uh, the most valuable thing of all, and that's his time. Yeah. 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 He, he, you know, I've only met him once. You know, and that was when you, you guys came up for yep. the first Sasquatch Roundup. And he does. He has this aura and this presence about him that you just want to be around him. I mean, yeah. he's magnetic. Yep. Nice guy. Nice guy. Um, great. And then the other question is, um, there's somebody, they wanted me to ask you, what has been your most significant experience involved in your, your looking for Bigfoot? There's, there's many. Um, and the thing is, is, you know, you have these little, you build a house that takes all these pieces and parts, the foundation, the, the, you know, your initial, um, deck, and then you start building the walls and the shingles and then drywall, all those little pieces, put it together and make it the structure that it is today. And it's just like that with my research. I find, um, hair samples or footprints or listen to testimonies and, and investigate. And it's, it all builds to this thing. The end result for me would be to literally prove what everybody's been talking about. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, I would say a little piece of everything. You know, it's just, you piece it all together. It's like a detective putting together the crime scene where you, it, it's not just one thing, it's a collaboration of everything. So that, that, that you know, sparks a question in my mind. Because there's a lot of people now that say that the only way to prove definitively that Bigfoot exists is that we have to bring back a body. Mm. And, and, you know, and I'm like, you know, like you say, pieces of the puzzle that you're getting uh, different things that you can put together and, and, you know, demonstrate that. But this thing where we have to have a body seems to be what a lot of people are talking about right now. It seems like that's the demand. And I don't I can't buy into that. I don't think that, I, I know you are flesh and blood. I see you sitting in front of me. I hear you. I see you. And I don't need to put your carcass on a table to know that you ever existed. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's like uh, you don't want to destroy what could possibly be the last specimen on the planet just to prove that it is here. 
there has to be a way through DNA, through hair samples, through, um, you know, I, I talked to a guy in Florida that wants to use darts, you know, uh, well, like tranquilizer, like a tranquilizer yeah. darts, bring this thing down, get, you know, draw a blood sample, grab a couple of hairs, do the footage, weigh it, you know, whatever you want to do, and then step back and, and let the, let it wear off. Uh, that's kind of a sketchy little game, but you know, right. no. <laughs> I don't know. What do you know the dosage of something? That's right. No, and well, I, that's and the and thing. I, what and what I understand is, you know, unlike what we grew up seeing on TV, it's probably it's eighty percent of the time it's lethal. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't know the weight, you don't know this, this, and this. So that's not a very safe method to go. No, I agree. I, I agree. So, yeah. yeah. And well, even if, even if there was, as you say, a carcass there, let's face it. That's not going to prove anything to anybody. You know, you could take them right up to it and they say, oh, you did something. Or So I think the other avenues will be more definitive, in my own opinion. Yeah. Good video footage, good samples, yeah. good, you know, that sort of thing. <clears throat> there's going to be, it's, it's, there's enough evidence around. We just have to find it. I think yeah. that, that we have everything at our fingertips, especially with technology, the way it's growing yeah. so fast. So... You know, that, that, what your last statement there leads me into the show because I, I've got to ask you about the show. Now, okay. I watched the first season, mm -hmm. which, I, which was good, which I enjoyed. But, man, the second season so far, I mean, is phenomenal on that. And I think that everybody should watch the show, and I'm not kidding you, it, because there's, there's a lot of shows and movies and things like that that are out about Bigfoot right now. But if you really want to watch a show that's going to show you the science the science behind it and the gear and the methodology and whatnot. I mean, people can learn a lot from the show yeah. because you're, you're not just out there. Oh, let's go look for Bigfoot. I mean, you've, you've got a plan. You, you've got the, I, I, I want a LIDAR radar. What is that thing called? Is that LIDAR. The LIDAR thing that identifies the trails. And then from there, you're looking at that and you're piecing it together. Then the water sources, you know, and then and, and food sources and, you know, the caves where they may be residing. I mean, it, dude, it's a really good approach to it. And I mean, I, even I learned a lot from the show. You heard time. him. He said, watch the show. Yeah. I'd listen to Steven. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it, it's well worth it. it, it yeah. It's well worth it. And so, how, somebody asked you, what's it like doing a show like that? Uh, it's, it's hard to explain. You, for me, I love what I get to do because I don't have to worry about my appearance or how... Um, it was it was a perfect fit for me because I have one camera guy that follows me around, and I just go hard charging. I yeah. mean, I do what I know. I, I, I grew up hunting elk. You know, we had a family in Montana where I was the only hunter where it was you go bag your elk and your deer or there's less meat in the freezer. That was just that was necessary. So you don't go out through a, a hunting season and miss. You have to go out. This is a survival thing. So I get out in the woods. My camera guy sticks with me. I bring my gear, and I just go. And I'm I'm tactically taking this thing on as far as, you know, overturned leaves. There's there's activity in this area. Is there hair? Is there a water source? Am I out in the middle of the desert? Probably not going to see anything that needs, you know, something to hide behind. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I, I go after it tactically, you know, in yeah. a very hunting mindset. And it's, I don't know, I've, I've never had a more perfect fit situation in my life. And to actually be able to be on the show with these guys, yeah. um, the rest of the cast are just absolutely amazing. It, highly intellectual people. Yeah. And do you guys really get together? I mean, get along as well as it appears on the show? You know what? We did a show, um, the, you already saw it at the beginning of season two, where we all sat around the table. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, we all sat around the table, and uh, the producers walked away saying, you guys are like a family. You you yeah. interact. We talk every day. Yeah. Off-season, it doesn't matter. We talk every day. We, you know, we talk about kids. We talk about stock market. We talk about political views. We talk about everything. And when we get on the set, it's very, very comfortable. I've never had, uh, I wish my normal job, my work job, was as comfortable as the people I work yeah. with. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you guys really seem to gel. Yep. And that, that's a good thing. 
you know, when I was watching the second season, I just have you, when you spoke, you're, the only thing you have with you is your cameraman. Mm -hmm. But I'm watching you with that humongous pack on your back that looks like you probably got you carrying all his gear too. You're packing around 100 pounds of worth of gear out there, my friend. Actually, we threw it on a scale. It's 86 pounds. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> standard military load, man. I'm yeah. ready. Um, no, I, I carry. I have my tent, my gear, my flashlights, my thermal imaging, my camera. Um, I have everything that I need in the field because I have PVF sevens or uh, night vision goggles that yeah. we use in the military. I have the military grade night vision goggles, and I have my uh, thermal optics, which all of that over time starts weighing pretty heavy. But when you're charging up the side of a hill, it feels really heavy. Yeah. And I have my camera guy, his name is Zach. And I'm telling you, this guy, ex-military, ex-army, he's as tough as they come. But every now and then he'll say, wait, wait on, hang on. <laughs> he's from Kentucky, so well, hang on, wait a minute. <laughs> and, uh, and he's got this, and, and I look back and I, and I say, look, you're carrying a camera, a little camera. And I give him so much crap about it, but if you think about it, I even with this backpack on, I use both hands. And if I need to balance myself, he is using no hands, and he's counting strictly on just his balance to come up and stay with me and keep me on that camera. So it seems like he would have an easy job, but I think his job is much tougher than mine yeah. because he, he doesn't have the benefit of using his upper body to, to help himself up the trail, right. too. So. Yeah, man, you guys, you're cruising out there. And, dude, in season one, when you, I, I, when you repelled down that cliff, dude, you're a wild man. I love I mean, to do, to do that for the show, I thought, no, dude, that, 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 was, that was nuts. I, I was like, no. I, I repel every chance I get. That's probably, and that's one of the things that's in the pack, that the repel gear and the yeah. rope has is, is got some weight to it. But I will always have that available, whether I'm repelling or if I just need something to stabilize, if I'm going to walk down the side of a, a hill that's too steep. But having that tie on, that lead line, is imperative. And, and you'll find out later on that I use that rope. Um, it's necessary. You know? yeah. and, and if you're going to go somewhere in the darkness and you, need to, you don't have light to find your way back, that's the perfect way. Yeah, and you guys do a lot of stuff at night. Yeah. And I mean, you guys aren't just me. I mean, you guys are cruising, you know, yeah. running around out there. Yep. And uh, man, no, <clears throat> great, great stuff. Great stuff. Now, you're also an author. And I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. And you've got a couple of books here. Well, you want to tell us about those? I had a story. Uh, it, it, so many years ago, I got involved in Bigfoot, of course, you know, as a researcher. In seventh grade, I wrote a story for creative writing class. And my teacher was supposed to give it back after I got my grade on it, and she never returned it to me. And it was this story, number one. It wasn't this- Can you the, hold that up so that folks- it wasn't, it wasn't the whole book, but it was, this was the story. And um, it's, once she never gave it back, because I just, it was all handwritten. Yeah. I decided I was gonna bring that story back and put it on a computer and turn it into a book. Because I knew it's a fictional story, but it's based off of actual locations of where I lived in Montana. So the landscape, the texture, the feeling, the smell, everything is absolutely accurate. The characters are what I would perceive from testimonies, what Bigfoot would act like or respond like. So I built this, this family. So I, I did the first book knowing that I was gonna write three. Yeah. And that was that was like how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> this this was a couple big bites of elephant to get the first book done. The second one um and I will tell you if you read this book and you don't feel some sort of emotion after you read it, you're a robot. Okay, well I have to read it then cuz I have I, I do have a copy. I've gotten it. hate mail from this really? book. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't have a book without snuffing some character off and getting somebody's attention <laughs> and uh that that's backfired on me, but um, finished the first book, um, wrote the second one, put that out. Um, and this one is a little bit bigger, and I am currently working on the third book. And what's the like, what's the title again? Um, Footprints of a Legend is the first one, and if you go on Amazon um, under my name Russell Acord, you can find uh, Footprints of a Legend, and then the second book, uh, Bigfoot and the Tripwire. Okay. The third one I'm working on right now 
if if the if you failed a motion on this one, the third one is going to completely gut you. Okay, well, okay, I'm going to read it this weekend, man. Yeah. If I get upset, I'm going to text you on it. Man. I'm sure you're going to you're going to send me some hate mail off of that one. Well, that and you're also a filmmaker. Yeah. Well, yep. tell us about what you've got in the works. Um, I can't tell you what I have in the works. I just do have I have two stories I'm working simultaneously on. One of them is a uh, a very very deep dive in depth documentary that is um, it reveals a lot that I think people might not be ready for. Um, it's heart wrenching and uh, but it's a story that has to be told and needs to be put out there. Then the is, other one is pardon. It's a true story. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other one is just a story, just a, a really neat yeah. story. Um, and then this summer, I'm actually uh, uh, the other the first two that I've done though. I did a documentary on Bob Gimlin, and that is the only place you can get the documentary on Bob Gimlin is at conferences where Bob Gimlin is. I no longer have it on um, online because, uh, sadly enough, I spent more time mailing out DVDs. Yeah. And I did not put it on Amazon because there's so much. You, if you put a book on Amazon you, or a, a video on Amazon, there's you have to have subtitles and there, there's a oh, bunch. Yeah. There's a bunch oh, of that stuff, stuff that goes with it. So I thought, no, I'm not. I'm not going through all that. I did all the work yeah. already. I'm not going to keep going. And then I did a, uh, a documentary on somebody you know, Adam Davis. Oh yeah. World Explorer. World Explorer. Yep. And do phenomenal. That was a lot of fun to do that Man. one. And yeah, <clears throat> Adam Davies World Explorer. If you haven't got a copy that. Uh, DVD, you got to get it. Got to get it. You got to get it, man. And, and that'll be available wherever Adam is. Yeah. Um, the first story that I did with Bob Gimlin, you can tell that I was just, uh, I heard that Bob, the, the year that I filmed it, uh, let me give you some background on that. Bob is 89 years old right now. 89, okay. 89, yeah. The, the, the year that I did it, um, I was working with Bob and he said, uh, I said, Bob, has anybody ever done a documentary real story on you? And he said, well, everybody said that they're going to do it, but he said nobody's really taking out the time. So me being yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> me, being me, um, I took four months off of work. And I said, Bob, we're doing your story. And he said, well, you know, you got work. And I, and I said, no, no, I'm doing your story. So we sat down and started uh, filming, editing, filming, editing. And you can tell that um, – and I'm filming with a camera standing in front of him, and I'm thinking – when I watch that story, I cringe because it's so amateur. But I did it because um, talking to his family, he was he was having some health issues. And I'm thinking, good God, if we don't get this man's story out and nobody has taken the time, we're going to miss National Treasure information. And he talks about his history where he rode with the sheriff's posse. He, I mean, he was with a union. Now, wasn't and, he a boxer? Oh, he was a fighter for the Navy. He got in a <laughs> car wreck. Picture this. Yeah. He got in a car wreck that landed him in a hospital bed for two years. Man, two years. Two years. After he got out of the hospital, he starts b breaking horses again. I mean, who, <laughs> oh, he's the he's the cowboy hat wearing version of Evil Knievel. Man, he just broken, busted, but he doesn't know the word quit. Yeah, and he keeps going. He's eighty nine, yeah. and he's still out. Yeah. Oh, man. So his first documentary that's that's my first film work, and. Um, as far as a filmmaker, I look at that and I just, I love it, but I'm just like, ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 no. Um, Adams came out much better. I, it was a little bit more time taken with that because I yeah. knew, you know, we, we filmed for a couple of weeks and just kind of getting his history and some pictures and stuff. But what I'm doing now, um, when my next film comes out, that will be a cinematic experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to look forward to that, man. Yeah. That, that'll be outstanding. Outstanding. Is there? Oh, I've got to ask you about what you you, you brought this little Bigfoot guy. Here. I brought my toys with me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell, All right, I'm gonna set them. the books down. I'm gonna go into two two different things, but they're kind of connected. During the show Expedition Bigfoot, you will never see me with my backpack on, with that guy not connected to the back, looking outward behind. Oh God, I gotta go back and so, see this. So, so if you'll see on the box, oh, this is a this isn't the new the new uh, label. The new box has, um, a, we named him Scout, and he's looking behind you, and he's got your six. He's always looking out behind <laughs> you. So 
a very, very good friend of mine, Jeff Byers, is he has a company called Creature Replica. CreatureReplica.com. Creature Replica.com. Yep. Creature Replica. And yep. And he manufactures these things and takes them to conferences all over the place. And I told him, I asked him, I said, do you mind if I take one of those with me and wear it on the back of my backpack? And he said, they're not going to let you do that. I called the producer. I said, hey, uh, I want to wear this thing on the back of my backpack. And he said, well, as long as Jeff will sign off on it that we are allowed to show it, he said, I'll get some authorization yeah. for you. So I don't go anywhere without that thing on the back of my backpack. And I'm telling you, these things, if you go on Creature Replica, he's actually got those where you can order them. And, and they're a very, very, did you grab that thing? Did you hold it? Yeah. That thing is solid. Yeah. It's, it's one of the most well, tough, badass action figures I've ever seen. Well, it, it's what I think is interesting is I thought I was the only guy that carried out, carried around a Yeti action figure or Bigfoot action figure, you know, and then to see you show up with this guy, I'm not the only one. Oh, man, but, he's always on my back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just kind of, that was a gift uh, from a friend of mine up there, a researcher up in Stevens County. I'll but, leave that one with you then. Yeah, no, I love it, man. Yep, that's all yours. Yeah. So he he's on. Uh, I also I have another thing that I do. Uh, you think I'm have a lot of free time, but I don't. Yeah, I think you must. No. <laughs> so I I actually work in Kennewick. I have a full time job, a professional job. I work with Exhibition Bigfoot. Um, I manage Bob Gimlin when it comes time yeah. for him to go to any conferences. I bring him to the conferences. Um, he does not. He doesn't want to drive. 800 miles. He doesn't want to fly without somebody coming with him. Sure. I understand. So uh, I have a, a company called um, Corridor13.com. Corridor13. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, well, that's where I have Bob Gimlin listed. I have Jeff Byers listed. I have um, Vince Vargas from Mayans MC listed. I have talent listed that if somebody says, I'm going to put on a conference, I want somebody unique at my conference to be a speaker or that sort of thing. If you go on my site, have a look at what I have there to bring to a conference and you, we communicate, we work out a deal yeah. and that person shows up. You know, that was another thing. Um, <clears throat> man, I'll tell you what, I've only been to your IBC once, but dude, that, that was phenomenal. That was, fun, that was absolutely phenomenal. I brought the wife and kids and we enjoyed our time there. Um, are, are we gonna be expecting another IBC maybe in the future? I'm not going to say any names, but in Washington State, we have a governor that actually tends to step on those kinds of dreams. <laughs> um, I had it set up for last year, ready yeah. to go, poised and ready. I had some really exceptional speakers, and that got yanked out from underneath me because of COVID, like every yeah. other business. So this year, we're still under some pretty stringent restrictions. And at the magnitude where I put these people in the... Toyota Center, where Three Rivers Convention Center. You saw this place. This yeah. facility is huge. You c and I can bring in 1,500 people and vendor hall and all that, but I can't allow that big of a crowd with the restrictions we have right now. So yeah. I have to wait this one out and see what happens over the next six yeah. months. And then it'll be a last minute, yes, we're doing it, or I'll just have yeah. to wait till the next year. Yeah, the, the COVID thing has just <clears throat> really put the hammer down on it a lot has. of stuff. It really That's what I love about this. Yeah, well, yeah, you can. <laughs> I don't have to deal with anybody. <laughs> right. And, oh, man. <clears throat> you know, um, I, I've learned just from putting on a few smaller events, mm -hmm. the the amount of time and, 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 and you've got to put into it and the expense and the stress and all that. But, man, to put on the show that you put on, I mean, it's just, you know. Well, you and I, we talked about this years ago, yeah. and, you, and you asked me, you know, about the conference that I put on. And I kind of outlined for you the headaches that come with it, and now you're finding out, yeah, aren't yeah, yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, I, I need some help with this, but we're doing the best we can, you know, doing the best we can. One bite at a time on one, that elephant. <laughs> that's the thing, one bite at a time. Yeah. I took the liberty of getting on your Facebook page, and, oh. I, and no, it's great page, but I, I had to pull off a couple of photos that I just, I, I wanted you to comment on. Okay. But um, one of them in particular is this photo here. Who is that guy? General Mattis. So General Mattis graduated um, Central Washington University, the same place I graduated. And at my, when I graduated, he was there to support all the military veterans. So I, I got to see him there again. But actually, when I was in the military, we served under his command as well. Yeah. So I, I, he, we were no strangers. Yeah. And I had seen him quite a few times in Richland when we do a benefit um, uh, the remembrance for veterans 
and he comes and supports that each year to um, he'll show up and talk to the veterans uh, the gold star families that we've lost yeah. members here in the state of Washington so we've we've been in the same space quite a few times yeah. and he was going to be a speaker at this event um, one of my friends I can't say his name uh, one of my friends is a military man he needed to ask General Mattis a question that was pertinent to it, it, it was pretty serious and um, he called me he said I know you know General Mattis can you get this letter to me to him and you can see right there in his hands he's holding a piece of paper and I, I walked up and I said General Mattis what is going on and we kind of chit chatted for a little bit I said look I know that you are currently working for the uh, presidential administration and your hands are tied as far as what you can say do or anything else but I need you to take this letter from me and do with this information what you feel is best because it was it was something where he had a, an opportunity to help somebody yeah that and and turns out that he actually when it was said and done this individual called me up and he said you will not believe but I got a personal phone call from General Mattis and wow. I thought Phew. and that tells you a lot about the character of the man because yeah. it's about um, it's not about hey don't you know who I am right. it's about um, that personal service that um, self selfless giving where he actually took the time to read off of a piece of paper that compelled him to reach out to yeah. the soldier that needed to speak to him that was that was a wonderful well, outcome th that's great because this guy has been a hero of mine for a long 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 time and I wish I would have went in the Marine Corps rather than the Army but I mean he had, plus he has some of the most phenomenal quotes in the world right about killing in war and all those kind of things it's he almost actually, frightening he actually held the theater for um, the Iraqi war. He was actually yeah. the c top command for, yeah. I mean, it was not unnatural to see him in the field. Yeah. He, and uh, th that is, that's one thing you have to respect about him as far as a military standpoint. He's not the guy that sits in the talk tent or in, a, in Kuwait and, you know, has comms. This man has desert sand in his boots. Yeah because he would step out there with the soldiers and actually address them and talk to them yeah. and speak to them. He was, he's a man's man. Does he, does he believe in Bigfoot? Never, <laughs> never hit him with that question. Okay. Wonderful. Well, that's cool. And then give him a call and ask him. Yeah. I'm, okay. <laughs> maybe I'll give you a note to pass off to him. Oh, okay. There you go. And, okay. And then I, well, t tell me about this. <laughs> oh, I, hazardous oh control freak. Okay. All right. So I work in a, field where I have to do nuclear and OSHA compliance. So I have, it's about controlling the hazards that anybody comes in contact with. And a group of me and coworkers, we thought that we were still young and we're not. Um, right. We readied ourselves for a few months to do a tough mutter. A tough mutter? Tough mutter, yeah. And that is where you do running, obstacle courses. Uh, you challenge yourself in ways that are just ridiculous. It's like boot camp Yeah. in, a, in about a seven-hour period of time. Oh. You just go out and just pummel your body every way you can. Mm. Underwater, over fence, up, up, just stupid stuff. Yeah. But it is probably one of the most physically demanding days. And uh, we all decided we were going to take that challenge as a, as a unified front. And we did good. Very we did cool. really good. Yeah. Very I got a little dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dirty. man, it looks like fun. Yeah, they made T-shirts for us, the hazard control freak, because we were always try controlling the hazards at yeah. our workplace. So, yeah, that's kind of, that's a funny picture, actually. Yeah, no, I saw that, and I said, okay, I got to have that one. <laughs> How you doing over there, Mitch? How are things in the warehouse? A little cold, but I'm doing fine. Yeah. I like this isolation thing. It's interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you pretty know, cool. we'll have to work within the system we can for a while. Um, I, I want to thank Russell for uh, obviously you have a way with words as proof as proved in your books. And yes, I too caught Bigfoot fever in 1967 sure. at roughly the same age. And I think that's a perfect um, way of explaining it. Um, yeah. And it's just been with me all this way. But just a quick question. Well, it's kind of a two part question. And you might be able to help me to kind of figure this out. Okay, one, it seems to me like maybe over the last 10, 12 years, I don't know, that there's been definitely a much uh, more of an increase in the interest in Sasquatch, Bigfoot, 
that type of thing. Sure. It's, it's all over the place. So that'd be the first question. And then the second one. Oh, you, one at a time. You're going to get me confused. <laughs> <laughs> so you say, yes, I, I do think there's been an increase. And, and I'll tell you why. It's because our technology has, has brought more evidence. I mean, we're seeing yeah. and hearing and uh, with social media and with the, our immediate response of what so, uh, I could see something, face, FaceTime it on Facebook, and everybody across the U.S. will see it the same, just about the same time I do. So yeah. we're, we have so much more rapid response over things that we see. Yeah. And okay. I think that's yeah. why there's much more interest and more exposure, and you're hearing about yeah. it a lot more. I've never yeah. thought, thought of it for that aspect, you know, because I really didn't get into the Bigfoot thing until about 2014 when I decided to, to really yeah. get into it. And I thought I was getting in on the tail end of it, but it just seems uh, exploding by magnitudes, yep. you know? And, and I think that's a good point. I, I never thought of that aspect. Because I always think, well, you know, it's a $500 million in industry, year industry, so everybody's getting into it, you know, to commercialize it. Right. But I think just more so the but that would mom be, and pops, the folks, that everybody with rapid. The $500 million industry, but that's kind of the chicken and the egg, which came first. And I think the, yeah. it, the interest has to come before the, the money will come. The question is... Yes. Yeah. The no, you answered the, the second part of my question chicken already. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and why? And um, no, and that's a that's a that's a good point. So yeah. yeah. And uh, did you have a second part? That no, that he answered my second oh, part because already. Of the technology, yeah. Oh, because yeah. of the technology. Yeah. The technology, the flow of information, and so much. So yeah. Great. Well, man, it's been a pleasure having you here. Now, is there anything that you would like to talk about? To, since we prodded and, and asked questions and things, is there anything you, you want to share? Let's see, we covered the book, we covered the awesome action figure, yeah. we covered the show. Uh, that's not the show. Yeah. But we, I'm trying to think. Um, quarter 13, um, yeah. you have access to um, some pretty amazing people in quarter 13. Yeah. And I tell you what, if I don't give a shout out to my camera guy, Zach, I'm going to get a phone call. Hi, man, you forgot about me. <laughs> so, Zach, you're the most awesome cameraman on the planet. All right, so I did my piece there. Okay. <laughs> so I think you – I was never in the military. I think it's you, – you have your six. Is that the right term? Got your six. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to help you out, dude. Okay, so let's talk about your, your beautiful daughter and your beautiful wife. They've been there to support you through this book. You, you mentioned them, and now's your chance just to say a very short, hey, my wife is great. <laughs> Aw. Because you got to go home. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, awesome wife, awesome support. Um, I have, oh, I, uh, good. I'm going to take this moment. I'm taking this moment. Absolutely. Um, a couple of days ago, I had a 12 year old daughter that turned into a teenager, 13. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. And let me tell you, <laughs> she knows everything. If you have any questions, <laughs> politically, environmentally, um, in general, yeah. she has your answer for you. Adrian, <laughs> yeah. keep on keeping on, kid. She's awesome. Right she, on. She's right. awesome. Great. Right on. Uh, wonderful. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I think we're, we're about out of time. Yeah. I, I, I want to thank you uh, again for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure to have you. And, uh, you know, best of luck to you in the future. And Thank you. Should we be looking forward to a season three, you think? Uh, so... <clears throat> when you, I, I, I want to address that real quick. You said that season three or season two is on Travel Channel, which has been picked up by Discovery Plus. So if you go on to Dis yeah. Travel Channel, you'll only see the first two episodes, right. and then anything beyond that. Um, and this is network decision. This is this is nothing to do with us as cast members. Network now controls Travel Channel. So in order to see anything beyond those first two episodes, you have to subscribe to Discovery Plus. Well, now that platform actually covers um, Animal Planet, all the paranormal shows, um, Travel oh, Channel, so you, Do It Yourself yeah. Network. All of those are now under the umbrella of Discovery Plus. So, for one subscription, you get all of this okay. information instead of you know yeah. piecing it out. Um, what I wanted to ask you, though, before I get out of here, um, well, and, and addressing season three, it all has to do with with viewership. Yeah. Now we've gone we, in the middle of this thing where we only had two episodes. We go from Travel Channel only to yeah. Discovery Plus. Now they have to figure out the measure of viewership and whether it is worth it to go on to season three. If I had my way, I'd love to see it continue. Yeah. But realistically, we have no control until we get those numbers back and they decide. So um, I hope. Yeah. But 
nobody knows. I mean, that that season two might have been it. I hope not, but um, you never know. Yeah. My question for you: Ooh. you have you have a uh, conference coming. Oh yeah. And I know that you are going to bring in Bob Gimlin. Yeah. Yeah. We had that conversation. Yeah. If I'm able, I will be there. Great. But I want to wish you all the luck in the world on your conference because Wonderful. I know how much work goes into it. They're yeah. tough. And um, you feel like the host of many, many people, and you will be drug in every direction possible. Um, but it's, it's always worth it because yeah. when people walk out of there and they feel like they got education, they picked up some cool swag from the vendor booths, and they got to meet people they always dreamed of meeting, which would be people like Bob Gimlin. And, um, good luck on that. Well, well, thank sincerely. you, and, yeah. and we sincerely we hope you can make it. We've I hope got so. it. We've got a spot for you, man. I'll bring my T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Bring your T-shirt. Yeah. You know what I'll do if I if I get to come to your conference, I'll bring my backpack and let people try to put that. Yeah, thing on. yeah. that's right. You can take people out and show them how to actually hike with something. Yeah, on their put back. that thing on and walk around the quad and come back and tell me how you feel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe get a ladder, make them climb up a ladder. Oh, we're we're trying to come up with some events for you guys to do with oh, people out there for that. <laughs> so I'm game. Yeah, you know right. Me, I'm always game. Well, we'll put you in charge. Well, great. Yeah. Thanks again. We're about out of time. And Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Russell Accord. Well, welcome back, my friends. And Mitch, what do you think about that? I think it was great. But I think every show is great. And yeah. after each show, I think, who are you going to get as a guest? Yeah. And um, you, just like this gentleman here, great guest. And we just yeah. they just keep coming. You keep finding them. And you've mentioned some other people mm -hmm. who are interested in being in the show. So, um, yeah, there's going to continue yeah. to be great guests, which – pretty much drives yeah. the conversation and yeah, it's great I'm just learned a lot very very happy to have russ on the show and you know the, the guy's got so much going on well and and i really appreciate that he took obviously his yeah. very busy schedule yeah. and um let's all say a prayer for him that his wife will still be um forgiving of all the time he takes away from home <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah really looking forward to what he has coming in the future and i Speaking of the Medellin Falls Bigfoot Festival i really really hope he can come and yes. by the way we've uh, we had bill biss on in the uh, in the audience with us today and um he is really kind of the director for the uh Medellin falls bigfoot festival and we wanted him to tell you a little bit about some things that are going on up there well hi everybody uh yeah the the, the bigfoot festival is going to be on uh june 19th and 20th uh it's going to be uh some seminars in the inside and the outside we're going to have uh, vendors and and actually we're going to get uh some of the speakers to be on the outside, uh, talk with the general audience and stuff on the outside. So it's not like uh, it's not like people are going to uh, miss seeing these people. They're going to be out out in uh, in the tents and and, and they got books and and all the great things and some experiences. So it's so it's going to be pretty cool that people can come up and actually meet these uh, these great folks. You know, like uh, uh, J.C. Williams, uh, Amy Blue, Thomas Seward. Uh, Dr. Alley, Shane Cor Corson, excuse me if I mispronounce that, but I mean we've got a series of these uh, guest speakers that are going to come in and do seminars, and we're also going to have them outside and and like uh, sh having their books and everything. So um, you know it's not it's it's not going to be that you're going to miss out if you don't come up there. You are going to miss out, um, you know, <laughs> on these people. So um, another another cool thing I was uh listen russ and uh i have a friend of mine up there that uh she was she was saying well could you like tranquilize russ and bring him home for me i, I said but i just <laughs> got a picture that she's a nice nice lady uh laura so uh she's she's also helped us in our in our bigfoot uh research and stuff um well, let's see what else uh do you think i should uh well add i think in? one thing you should really stress and i've gotten questions from people well, what if I just don't have them, you know, the $140 a person for the right, dinner right, and stuff? Right. And what should I, I mean, what's the point? But there's, you know, there are limited seats. So if for whatever reason it gets sold out before, there's going to be a lot of people out there who just are going to lose out because they won't have the tickets because the tickets are going to sell out. But there's still a reason to go there. Number one, the people of Medellin Falls are awesome. And there's going to be for lack of a better term, like a meet and greet outside. Right. And, so and there's and other people like um, and another, Bruce, another Bruce thing, from our previous show. Another thing too is that we're we're working really hard on uh, as we know the COVID and everything. We're we're going to be very flexible on all of this and and work with uh, everybody up there to make this a success. So um, you know, don't be don't be shy. Come on up. There's going to be lots of vendors. Uh, 
outdoor entertainment and and like I said uh, we we're we're working to uh, like Bob's gonna be up there and uh, you know I mean this is this is gonna be fantastic we we're putting together something that we're gonna uh, try to continue on every year is making us a festival and uh, making this a integrate part of you know Bigfoot hunting and everything and we've got some uh, other we've also got a film coming up that's gonna be a, a great film um, it's it's excellent film it's um, it's gonna be done the premiere of it. it's gonna be up there we've got a uh, um, a theater up there that's gonna be shown at that's free that's gonna be you know open to the public and free so it's it's like I said we're trying to incorporate a, a lot of a lot of things for everybody to come enjoy you know and enjoy um, we've got some people coming from uh, uh, they, they work at comic-con and stuff so they're gonna be up there um, just visiting and uh, we got um, we got interesting people that are coming up I'm, I can't really tell you who all there's gonna be there but yeah. there's gonna be people that's uh, that's gonna really make this uh, festival fantastic yeah Great. W wonderful Looking wonderful and, and, and we do have some special guests that are gonna be at this festival that we're, we're kind of keeping under our hat for the mm -hmm. time being which is wonderful and one of the points with the festival as well is you know a, 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 a good size component of this event is films and like Bill brought up we do have the uh, we have a theater at our disposal and uh, we've got a few films uh, for the folks for all of you that come up to watch um, unfortunately three of them right now pretty much have the same people in them so we would love for some other people to sub submit some films so if you have a short or a movie or something that you would like to submit at the festival please contact Bill and how do they do that uh, well you can get a hold of me uh, at porta.us uh, that that brings up the Medellin Falls uh, Bigfoot Festival uh, website um, and um, at, it's just a, just a start you can send a quick message and we'll get back with you and we have our uh, film guy Marshall that's been following us around and, and doing like uh, Zach's been doing uh, up in the mountains with us and everything uh, he's gonna be working on on some, some submissions for the for the film so uh, get a hold of us and we'll we'll get with Marshall and we'll get this all put together so can you say again the website uh, yeah um, for those those Porta, of us who are slow P -O -R -T -A. I'm sorry I was talking over you go ahead no that's okay uh, P-O-R-T-A and that's dot U-S and um, it's the Medellin Falls Bigfoot Festival in June that you'll you'll have to tap on to get to that okay. to that site on that site and that's where the tickets are uh, being sold and uh, there's a limited amount of tickets there is uh, 60 VIPs and uh, a little over a hundred uh, general emissions so uh, go on the site and order and um, we're we're just happy to uh, to bring it to Medellin Falls thank you once again my friends be well be kind to one another and we'll see you next week There's a fable of a beast that once roamed this land Some say still exists as a big tall ape man Standing over eight feet tall, quite a sight to see Living in the forest is quite a mystery Bigfoot, Bigfoot, roaming through the land Bigfoot, Bigfoot, a hairy ape-like man